Whatever reading slump I'm in, I'm over it. I think they'll love it. I never said it was good, I said I liked it. Let's start Summer in the City. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a reading vlog, obviously. I feel like I've not filmed a reading vlog in so long, like a proper let's sit down and mood read vlog. I've obviously had like a lot of different uh, reading challenges and bookish related vlogs going up. I've missed just sitting and binge reading with you guys, just sitting and reading books and chatting about them. So that's what we're doing today. But honestly, I'm just gonna pick up what I wanna pick up because I've been in a reading slump. I've read the least amount of books all year. In the last two months, the numbers are just getting smaller and smaller and I have just been so busy with like work and life. So much has happened. I feel like my channel here has grown quite quickly in a very short period of time, as well as my TikTok and my bookstagram. Everything has moved quite, quite quickly and I've been trying to find the best ways to keep up with everything because obviously I started out by uploading twice a week on my channel here and I'm still going to be continuing doing that. And I have dropped working hours. So I've had to like make some changes with work and life and things to be able to have time to do everything that I want to the standard of quality that I want. So if you are new here and you know absolutely nothing about what I'm talking about, my name is Emmy and I make a lot of reading and bookish content specifically around fantasy, fantasy romance, romantasy. There's a whole debate going on right now on fantasy romance versus romantasy and how they're different things fantasy romance is a fantasy with a romance but romantasy is romance first in a fantasy setting anyways i like to read a lot of fantasy type of romance books but i read other things too but i have been reading a lot of contemporary romances in my re recent vlogs because i've been on vacation and you know summer type of reads in summer tropical countries but i'm ready to get back into my fantasy era so that's what we're doing i have an entire physical tbr i think maybe i need to get a tbr card loads of downloads on my kindle when i was picking my october tbr video with you guys i picked I have a few books and I want to get one of them at least ticked off in this video. The goals for this reading vlog are catch up on my Goodreads reading goal, you know, tick off a few books, which is basically just read, okay? So just gonna read. Read one book on my October TBR and continue a series I'm in the middle of. They are the three goals for this video and hopefully they will help get me out of a reading slump and get back into some fun reading time. So let's jump into the reading. Hello everyone, long time no speak. It's actually not been long time no see because I have not filmed an actual reading vlog or a mood reading vlog or a continuing series I'm in the middle of or a 24 hour readathon. Basically any of my normal reading vlogs in weeks because I've been doing other vlog content and all my reading vlogs I did kind of pre-film and schedules while I was like traveling and on a holiday so anyways long story short I feel like I haven't properly spoken to the camera and filmed a reading vlog in a while even if it doesn't really feel like it but to me it has so that's what we're doing today I'm so excited I've come home had a shower I've finished work I've put on my Sarah J Mass Throne of Glass pajamas from Live Co you guys have already seen my satin set for Akita and Crescent City and I've ordered a long set and it's green for Terrison, of course. I thought it was perfect timing to start a reading vlog. What are we reading? Well, let's talk about it. There are so many books that I want to read. I want to read An Ember in the Ashes. I've got my book club book to do, which is Anathema by Carrie Lake. I don't know, is that how you say it? I'm running out of space on my bookshelf now that I'm starting to stack books in piles around my room. A little, little bit of a problem, but I've got some new books that have been sent to me, some book mail by indie authors that I want to read. But mainly I want to read An Ember in the Ashes. And right now, the new book that I started last night, oh my god, why did no one tell me to read it sooner? Like, why did you guys not tell me to read it sooner? I am 16% of the way through A Kiss of Iron by Claire Sager. Obsessed. Hooked. This is good. If you like Akita, if you like Throne of Glass, A Court This Cruel and Lovely, even A Deal with the Elf King, you're gonna like this. This is good. This is fun. This is a fey fantasy romance, obviously. Adult, I think it's gonna get a little bit spicy. In the cutthroat game of Court Life, I love Court Life. It's really, really fun. I think that's why it's reminding me of like A Court This Cruel and Lovely with the element of Court Life and being the queen's lady-in-waiting. Anyways, masters manipulate pawns and you never know which one you are. One thing's for certain, there's no space on the board for love. Already hitting. We have a handsome, ruthless, and cunning Faye and a fiery main female character who steals 
from the Fae and you don't steal from the Fae. Sorry, got a bit distracted there or interrupted actually. Cameron came home and brought me some flowers. I had to put them in a vase. But anyways, we are reading A Kiss of Iron. I'm actually reading it on Kindle because it's on Kindle Unlimited, but I have this beautiful sprayed edge special edition as some book mail. So that was very lovely. This is on my TBR for the month of October. We picked it in my picking a TBR jar video so we're reading my tbr together but i would love to binge as much of this as i can tonight i'm very excited to continue reading i think it's going to get really good and mariana has said that she's expecting like live updates and me to spam her with this because both book one and two were 4.5 stars for her she said book two doesn't give middle book syndrome which is extremely exciting for me because that just makes me want to read the series even more and book three is coming out soon which is why i was sent this book in the first place Am I kind of ignoring all the series that I'm in the middle of to read new books that are on my TBR and I'm excited about? Yes, I don't care. Anyways, let's start this book. It's a couple days later I have not read and honestly I'm so ready to just end this reading slump. What is this bit of hair doing? <laughs> Whatever reading slump I'm in, I'm over it. We're just gonna sit today and finish this book and start a second book. We're gonna read two books today. I don't know if I'll finish the second one, but we're definitely gonna gonna finish the first one, which is A Kiss of Iron, which I have to say, I am loving. But it is a little bit lusty. Like if you're someone who want like a really slow burn and the characters to have like a friendship first and all that, probably not gonna be for you. Like straight away, these characters find each other attractive. But the court setting is so fun. And I know that there's book two and book three coming soon. So maybe I'll binge that. But I also have a whole pile of of new books here that I've been sent. I do want to read An Ember in the Ashes. So that is on my like immediate TBR. And to be fair, the pages are quite big. It's like 450 or something pages, but I'm pretty sure it's YA. You know, not as daunting as it, it seems. I was also sent The West Wind by Alexandra Warwick. And I think this is part of an interconnected standalone series. So there's a book one, but you don't have to read it. Like it follows different characters. And I think this one is set uh, like inspired by Scotland, which is cool because I live in Scotland. We have The Vilest Things by Chloe Gong. And I really want to read this. This is a new release. It's also beautiful. Like look at that. Oh, there's some really beautiful artwork in this. Wow. But I haven't read the first book. I need to read book one first. I'll put that one down for now and I need to get my hands on book one. And maybe I'll read it on Kindle. Summer in the City by Alex Astor. This doesn't come out until next year and I somehow managed to get my hands on an arc of it. Obviously she has the Light Lark Saga, which is one of my favorite young adult fantasy series. It's so underrated. I didn't even know this until I started getting into books and until publishers started sending me stuff or I was like following other book creators, but these are ARC copies, so you can't buy them and the final thing is not gonna look like this. And they always say like, uncorrected proof not for resale. Like, this is not what the final book is gonna look like, but it's, um, yeah, here, yeah, an advanced reader's copy. These are basically sent out to press and book creators and stuff to read books before they are announced because if they like them, then they can help talk about them. I find all my books through other book creators and Goodreads and reviews and recommendations. So a lot of people who work in publishing, book press, book creators and stuff get sent advanced reader copies, which is literally exactly what it says. Typically, I like to read my ARC copies closer to when the book is getting published. So that is sort of like aligns at the same time. That's what I did with my rec reading vlog that was posted like the day or the day after Reckless came out which was fun. This one I'm just too excited for and I feel like it's short quick fun palette cleanser so maybe I will read that like I feel like I need this and I love Alex Astor so oh Ali Hazelwood says pure steamy fun in the perfect summer read also this is her first adult book we'll see what we're thinking about that <laughs> and then the last book I got is Riftborn this this is gonna be quite fun to read 20 years after rebellion branded her an outcast Fia navigates the city rife with prejudice so deep it's often deadly but she harbors a secret one that would paint an even larger target on her back a hidden power within her is growing threatening to destroy everything she's built for herself enter the elusive i can't pronounce that name i need to go and look up the pronunciation sid general laric ashford 
Yeah, I need to look that up. Who is building a unit of powerful wielders within the guard to face a growing threat. Wraiths of darkness devour the western border, leaving a trail of death and destruction in their wake. When fear's power erupts and two daughters of nobility are seemingly dead, General Ashford offers her a chilling choice. Join the Sid guard or face execution. I think we've got like a mentor and mentee type of thing here. Torn between surrendering to the chaos of becoming a weapon for those who took everything from her, Fia must confront her growing feelings for the general and face a dark truth that could shatter everything she's known. This is so right up my street. I'm excited for this one. So we have so many options of like what books to read. I'm basically, but the amount of books that I'm collecting, like I've stopped buying books. I've said that I want to do like a, a book shopping day and a book haul soon, but I want to like clear out some of my TBR first. I'm also running out of space on my shelves and they're going to have to be reorganized very soon. I basically just need to move but I'd like to buy a house next year. So I don't think I'm gonna be moving anytime soon. So we've got to kind of make do with what we've got. You will just see piles of books start to hang around my bookshelf. So then it's like, do I get a TBR cart? But then I don't want to get a TBR cart, but maybe it would help to have a TBR cart. Do I get, mm. Okay, so I moved things around. I'm like not obsessed with it, but we have more room. We've got some space. So I basically just moved all my contemporary romances to the top shelf and then everything below that is fantasy. And I don't love it as much, but I, I like things to be a bit more uniform and cohesive. So I kind of want to like still move things around and it is a bit more uniform now. And I have like authors together, but still not 100% into it so we have my magnolia parks books my elsie silver then we got emily henry abby jimenez i should actually organize the authors by alphabetically a b c d e f g h i j all my authors and their books are together my lucy score books i've never read any of them they're just so big it intimidates me for a romance like why is it 600 pages i wanted to keep my ya fantasy books together so we have my stephanie garber ones and then it goes down into my other ya and then here i kind of just hid my sh shatter me books at the back because i want the special edition facing forward but the series is so big I, I don't know how i really don't know what i'm doing with this shelf but then that way i can have this woven kingdom on the same shelf but i i do not know and then here i have my fairy loot edition books on these two sides just because i like the way that it looks having the sprayed edges facing out and it just being symmetrical i have three more fairy loot books arriving that also reminds me i bought the powerless special edition fairy loot books and i'm a bit nervous about they come because i don't know where i'm going to put them but we've got room here when sky Three comes out in any of the favorites this is like my favorites shelf then i've read half of this shelf more adult fantasy books some of them are ya as well so i don't know again i've read half of this shelf and then again the bottom i've read half of that shelf and i haven't read the other half and then they're my arc editions down there or like indie authors to be read hardcovers to be read and then hardcover favorites i think i need to do some research and have a think about what i want to do because i'm not happy with it it doesn't look terrible it's just it's not my favorite i just want to move and have an entire wall for my books that would be good and i have a pile of books there that i need to like sort and go through some of them i'm filming with so they're there anyways let's go read because i want to read now I am 64% of the way through this book. I love it. It's so good. Like it's literally gotten to a point where three chapters ago I said I would pause, but I can't. I just want to keep reading. Like it's getting so good. It's also like not what I thought it was going to be at all. I mean, I didn't know what I thought it was going to be, but it's so much better. So I'm really enjoying it. I just love it. And I mean, like before I was saying like, it's a bit lusty in the sense of definitely an attraction between the characters right from the start, but it's not lusty in the sense of like they immediately act on it like it's hard to explain without like spoiling things but you do get like a slow burn within it because like, every time there's a chapter coming I'm like come on just kiss 
our main male character has shadows and he's mysterious and you can tell that he definitely likes her and is interested in her from the jump but he's keeping so many secrets and, and things hidden to himself so i don't know whereas like our main female character i love i feel like if you like blood and ash you will like these two characters like they're very much similar type of characters like we have a not as petite as everyone main female character with red hair who has previous trauma and insecurities and then a main male character who sees like her strength and is so confident and just kind of says and does whatever he wants i love that dynamic I love reading. <laughs> I don't know if this will be five stars, but it's it's giving me similar feelings. Like I'm really, really kind of enjoying it. I just don't know how it's gonna end. And there's been like so many little minor subplot things that are happening that I'm like, oh, did not see that coming or that's a bit unique and interesting, but I love books about like a court setting like this. It's fun. 230 pages left. And my Kindle saying it will take me just over two hours to get through. This is so underrated. Like I had seen people talking about A Kiss of Iron, but like why didn't anyone tell me to read it sooner? And why are more people not recommending it more? Like this is one of the best fantasy romances that I've read this year. Like it's up, gonna be up there in my favorites for sure. I'll need to see how this plays out, but I do already think that I'm enjoying it more than A Court This Cruel and Lovely. I'm gonna take Cooper on a little walk now and then we'll continue reading this when I get back. <laughs> Am I still wearing Throne of Glass pajamas? Yes. What are we gonna do about it? <laughs> I finished A Touch of Iron. Actually, this is A Touch of Poison. I just immediately downloaded book two, but we're not gonna read that yet because Mariana says you need to read slaying the shifter prince first because it's kind of like a six scorch roses situation where story set in the same world but like not part of the series but these characters are in book two so i'm gonna immediately download and read that and book two is 710 pages the first book was 600 pages this one is like 380 and i think i could read that in like one sitting right now i have my kindle stand i think we're gonna put the kindle in it and we're just gonna read it is part of the mortal enemies to monster love series which is where a bunch of authors all wrote their own slaying the Carissa Broadbent did slaying the vampire conqueror which is set in the same world as like the serpent and the wings of night crowns of Nyaxia books Claire Sager has slain the shifter prince which is part of the same world as a kiss of iron and there are other authors who have their own books I'm making my way through all of like the series and then reading the books as part of the series so anyways Mariana told me to read this one next so we're doing that and I should be able to read it in the next four hours hours and then go to bed so we're gonna be sitting and binging this book let's read this book <laughs> 100 pages in 27 percent. i don't know what's going on <laughs> i hate the main male character but i think that's the point it's interesting i don't know how they're gonna make me like him cut to the part of the book where i suddenly like him <laughs> because surely how <laughs> It's a very interesting story though in the way it started out. 10 out of 10. Has you intrigued? Definitely like A Kiss of Iron more. But I do love that this series has more like traditional fae. And in this book we've got like proper like old mythological fae with horns and different coloured skin and stuff. So that's fun. I just don't think I'm ever going to like this main male character. I love him now. No, I don't. That's a lie. <laughs> I just thought it'd be funny to say we've got a puppy here as soon as kami comes in he will uh put her in her crate but reading the book 50 percent of the way through it's giving what i wanted it to give <laughs> my jaw has been on the ground the last couple of chapters i'm like whoa okay this book is spicy and it is a bit more graphic and mature but the plot twist like i saw part of it coming but also not the other part i need to just permanently say i never said it was good i said i liked it when i say something's good it just means that i like it but i also think it's good because i like it does that make sense you might read this and not think it's good so who really knows but anyways getting a kindle stand and remote is the most extra thing i've ever done in my life and also like the best thing i've ever done to reading and clicking <laughs> I love it. So I finished Slaying the Shifter Prince last night on my Kindle. I'm not going to go out and recommend that book to anyone if you're not already reading Like a Kiss of Iron because it can be read as an interconnected standalone but I don't think that I would recommend it as an interconnected standalone book unless you like really dark and weird fantasy books. 
because that was the craziest book I think I've ever read. Can't really spoil anything, but it starts out with our main female character is trying to assassinate the prince and she fails and he takes her life and is like, you're mine and I own you now. And it's not in like a, like a resand way where, it, oh, I'm, I'm caring for you and leaving you alone. In, in this place and you have all these resources and stuff. No, he makes her wear a collar. It's a bit intense. <laughs> Actually, it's really, really intense. Like there was at one point, where I, like the whole time I was like, I hate this main male character. I finished the book and I still don't like him. There was some character development and growth, but both of the main characters were just as like fucked up as each other. But that was wild. <laughs> I gave it, I think a three star because I did, in, it was entertainment, okay? But my goodness, if you don't like anything slightly dark, don't read that. Funny at the same time. <laughs> I literally read it in three and a half hours. It was so fast and I'm so excited to go into a touch of poison. This reading vlog right now is just me reading Shadows of the Tenebris Core series. So I promise the next book I read, we'll read more than three books in this vlog. I know it's gonna have a big cliffhanger plot twist and I know it's probably gonna destroy me, but finished book one, I read the interconnected standalone that's set in the same world where apparently the, these characters are relevant in book two. I'm reading book two, so that's three books in a series. I feel like I miss sitting and binging a whole series or reading all the book at once. I feel like a lot of the time, that's typically how I would read. Like I read all of Avatar, then I read all of Crescent City, then I read all of Throne of Glass, then I read Fourth Wing, Powerless. Like I would go and read all the books in one series before moving on to the next and getting up to date even if there was like new releases and stuff to come, at least I've read all those books. Like I read Light Lark back to back. I went into Caraval, I read the trilogy, then I went straight into Once Upon a Broken Heart. Rather than like picking up the first book here and the second book here, but with my reading vlogs, I feel like it's a bit boring to sit and watch me read a whole book series if you're not that interested in the book series. Tell me if I'm wrong, please, because I think if I do a reading vlog and I'm just reading one whole series, unless you're specifically interested in that series, it's probably a little bit boring. I don't know, I mean, when I watch reading vlogs, I'll watch people read absolutely anything. I don't care. I've picked up half of a series and put it down and started another half of a series in reading vlogs for your entertainment just to like change it up and keep it interesting but I miss just sitting and binging a whole book series at once and maybe I'll just make my vlogs a little bit longer so that I can have a bit more diversity in terms of the type of book we're reading but I am kind of enjoying it. I feel like this is helping me get out of my reading slump by finding a new book series to like binge and obsess over and it's only taken me a couple days so I do have plans later today it's why I have makeup on otherwise I would be looking like a toe in my reading vlog but I only have a couple hours to sit and read so we're gonna put on my headphones and just sit and read as much of this book as we can right now to jump back into this with Bastion oh because it's dual point of view we have Bastion chapters in this as well so I'm very very excited so let's start a touch of poison also I checked goodreads when I finished book one because I was like oh my god I'm loving this so much 4.75 stars book one clicked on it and everyone I know has rated it like two and three stars <laughs> so I was like oh Am I missing something? I don't even care. Like, I'm having such a fun time with this book. That's what I love about reading. Goodreads is good to, you know, see other people's opinions and also if there's things that you're unsure of or you're uncertain or, you know, you can read and see if other people had a similar reading experience. But at the same time, like, I really don't care if someone hates a series that I love and I don't care if someone loves a series that I hate. I think it's so fun that we all have different opinions and interests and most of the books I read I read them because they're fun and I'm having a fun time and it's good. And if I rate them high, it's not necessarily because it's like a perfect, amazing book. It's because five stars is a feeling. I like the book. Doesn't mean that you're gonna like it, but, but book three, I think I'm gonna love it. So let's dive in. I am gonna sit with these clips in my fringe because I blow dry them with a bit too much volume. I need them to flatten out because I keep separating. Anyways, you don't care about that. We're gonna ignore this. Okay, yeah. This is good. <laughs> I can't lie, I do just want to jump into this book and yell at both of the characters and just like force them together and have a conversation. Though I'm only like 13% of the way, so I'm not even 
pages in. I feel like we're gonna have some really good found family in this, but I'm really enjoying this so much. I love fae fantasy books. I think anything with fae is just my favorite. And this is like a human and a fae. So our main female character is a human and the main male character is fae. And in book one, they were in like the human realm. And in book two, they've gone to the fae realm. So fun times. I'm like tying my shoe at the same time, but I'm gonna have to put the book down and then we'll pick it up later on tonight and do some bedtime reading. So it is the next evening. I didn't actually read that much last night. We came back quite late and crawled into bed. But anyways, I'm gonna finish A Touch of Poison tonight because I want to. So that's my goal for the evening is to read the rest of it. I'm 25% of the way through, just under 200 pages, which means the book is like just under seven. So I've got maybe around like five and a bit of hours of reading to read of the book left. And that means that I will be in bed asleep before midnight and have a great night's sleep and we'll have finished this book. So that's the plan. I'm actually gonna just go and put my phone on charge in the other room so I don't get distracted to pick it up or doom scrolling. But I am so obsessed with this book series right now that I'm just loving being back in this world. And I feel like I've really hit the jackpot because if I didn't enjoy this book series, I don't think I would be as excited to pick it up. I think that's that's the thing. Like as I, you know, I was talking about the other day saying how it's been a while since I've binged a book series, but at the same time, I've not really found a book series that I really wanna binge. So stumbling across this, and reading this and loving it so much. I am really enjoying and it's helping me love reading as much as I do and even more. I'm definitely going to prioritise and focus on the books that I'm excited to read and really want to read. And I think moving forward, like if I read a book and love it and want to binge the series, I'm just going to do that. And then if I read it and it's okay and I'm not like super interested to pick up book two straight away, I won't no pressure i don't need to put any expectations on it but how many series i'm in the middle of right now i've got one two three four five so i'm in the middle of 19 series technically but a few of them are like i've only got one book to read and they're new releases that are coming out yeah most of them i have one or two left to read in the series but i've been waiting because new releases are coming out so not all of them are out so I'm gonna go and sit and binge this book now. This is one of these romancy books where I can sort of just live in the world, and switch off my brain, and I don't have to think, and I can just live there. I literally transport myself into this book when I'm reading it. Like, I feel like I'm living in this world, and I am just watching these two characters live out. I feel like I'm watching a TV show, but like through my head. I'm sitting here and I'm reading these words, and I can visualize everything, the setting, the atmosphere, the characters, the storyline, the plot. Like, I can see it like a movie, and I love the way that um, books like that make me feel. So I'm enjoying this. It's going up there with one of my new favorite fans fantasy book series, so. But I'm not ready for the cliffhanger because I know it's gonna kill me at the end. has been a little bit. Oh, Cooper's coming. I'm about to start Summer in the City, The Ark. I'd honestly like to read the entire thing tonight because it's not too many pages. Okay, so that that's the plan. I finished A Touch of Poison and I'm gonna give that book four and a half stars, I think. I really enjoy that series. I think that's one of my new favorite fae fantasy series. And I do just want the third and final book in the trilogy now. And I can't believe I've read all three, well, the first two books and then the book that's set in the same interconnected standalone world. You don't have to read that one. Slaying the Shifter Prince. It's very dark, that one. Like darker than the A Touch of Iron. But I'd say it's like a darker romantic -y. But I, I need like a little fun palette cleanser. So we're gonna read Summer in the City now and see how far I get through. But a nice little story before bed. So that's the plan. And then I think this will be the last book that I read in this vlog because otherwise I could just keep going and going and going. But I'll probably start a new reading vlog like as soon as I finish this book and we'll be picking things up straight away. So plenty more reading vlogs to come. Anyways, let's start Summer in the City. Okay, so 20 pages in and already starting chapter four. Like we've read three chapters in 20 pages and I kind of love it. Like I love stuff that's set in New York, movies, books, everything, because New York always feels like its own character, if that makes sense. Like it's very atmospheric. The book has started off with a bang. I didn't know what to expect at the start. I was like, oh, okay, would you go, we went right straight in. Love it already. I'm, I'm easy to please, guys. I'm gonna enjoy sitting here and continuing to read. We 
you've read this last night, I finished it. I think I'm gonna say four stars. I really enjoyed it, but like rating contemporary romance books is so difficult for me because it's so different from how I rate fantasy books. Something around a four feels right for this book. It was fun. It's what you want from a summer read. Like I can imagine rereading it next summer and it being so like cute and fun and wholesome. There are some really fun tropes. I just think when I think of rom-coms, I love 90s and early 2000s nostalgia. I love all the cheesy, you know, typical things, you know, rivals or, you know, enemies do where they hate each other and there's forced proximity and I feel like if you set a book in New York City the city becomes a character itself and there's almost like a different set of expectations of what you want from like a New York City based rom-com and this did it all like we were going all over the city we were doing different things we were finding the best pizza in the city I just think it was fun. There was obviously a subplot going on of this task of our main female character is a screenwriter and she's trying, well, she's got writer's block and she's trying to write something. So her neighbor with false proximity, who she had already met two years prior and hates for her own reasons, he agrees to help her get out of her writer's block and take her to these like different locations to help inspire her writing and her story. And it's fun, and, but it's also a billionaire romance so it's a little bit ridiculous but that's what you want from billionaire romance you don't want it to be realistic because it's not okay am i reading it this at times and he's just like let's go on my private jet to paris and you're like if it was not a rom-com you'd be like oh yeah of course but it's a billionaire rom-com like you know what you're getting into so i'm like yes say yes because if you don't you're crazy like i want to go on his private jet to paris like are you kidding me um it was just magical it's just fun. The third act conflict in chapter 30 in particular, I don't know what happened in chapter 30. I felt like I read an entire book in that chapter. I was like, wait, one thing was happening after the other, then the other. You know, the resolution and where we came to isn't my favorite way for a contemporary romance to end and resolve. And obviously rom-coms have traditionally happily ever afters. So yes, this book does end with a happily ever after, but the way that we got to there towards the end, I was like, why <laughs> no <laughs> and that is the only reason that it isn't five stars is because it was just like my least favorite type of conflict and resolution and the time frame that it happened in i was like but it makes sense and i mean because it's just personal taste and personal preference so but it was so fun it was so cute and i was pleasantly surprised by it so four stars for somewhere in the city and we're gonna end the vlog here because i don't know how long it is already but i know it's too long <laughs> I am going to pick up another book today and I'll probably start a new reading vlog for that. So I will see you guys in the next reading vlog. Make sure you're subscribed so that you can watch more reading vlogs if you enjoyed this one. Yeah, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.